Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome back to another episode of the Bay Ragney Show. I have my good friends and special guest tonight, the one and only Mr. Trip Eisen and Dante from Face Without Fear. We're going to talk to them in a second because they have a bunch of stuff going on and a bunch of stuff getting ready to pop off and come at you. But before we talk to them, I tell everybody about today and all of our shows is brought to you by our good friends over at Bombers and Sleeves. And they are the lifestyle apparel brand and they're dedicated to bringing you the war on self-doubt. This is for the bold, the fearless and authentic souls who never back down and wear it all on their sleeves. Bomb your boundaries today at bombersandsleeves.com. So without further ado, here they are. The one and only Trimp and Dante from Face Without Fear. What's going on, guys? Hey, man. We're What's here in going on? beautiful New Jersey. Yeah. Beautiful nice New Jersey. Here. We're about to open up. The governor's going to make a big announcement. Did he make it yet? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's kind of it, – it's crazy. Like, I, I went back to look and see, like, the last time we did one of these interviews. It was almost, literally almost a year ago. It was June 11th. So it was 11 months ago. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Like, where the hell did the time go? Yeah, COVID time is like a time warp, man. It's crazy. <laughs> I'm not trying to do the time warp. Yeah. You you don't want to do the time warp again? No. <laughs> I'm good. I didn't want it. <laughs> not recommend. So so you know that that leads me to ask my my first question is, you know, um with this whole COVID craziness, this whole pandemic, um, this past year, I mean, in, in reality, you guys truly are like a new band, you know, even though trip, you have your past resume, mm -hmm. but face without fear is a new band. And you guys were starting to do some shows, starting to put out some music, some videos, and then boom, everything gets put on hold world comes to a stop. How does that affect you guys, especially as a new band? Like, how do you think it's like hurt you guys? Has it given you time to regroup and rethink things and redo things? Or, yeah, it, there's there's pros and cons because like big bands, some bigger bands, medium sized bands were hurt, you know, because they couldn't tour, they couldn't do certain things. But uh, smaller bands, like you know we can survive and you know it just made us you know go and work on some material and, and a lot of bands took the downtime but we it was pretty quick we thought about doing a live stream oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we, like as soon as the thing started we were like we like hey let's do a live stream and wear surgical masks like like surgical masks <laughs> weren't even like a thing yet. Yeah, we were like, yeah, yeah, yeah let's get oh there's a shortage of them we were thinking of getting surgical masks and doing a whole live yeah. stream and like we just couldn't get it together quick enough. You know, it would have been cutting edge at the time, but you know, yeah. just, we couldn't get it together quick enough. So we ended up doing it in June. You know, that's when we talked to you and, and uh, right. Right. We, we ended up getting the live stream out there and we filmed, you know, we're little by little releasing, you know, some of the, some of the, the songs, but um, right now we're just concentrating on the studio. You know, we're in the studio we're recording the album, you know? Yeah. Now let, let, let's go back to the live stream real quick. Um, Again, it's hard to believe it was almost a year ago, but <laughs> <laughs> that came out awesome. Like, I mean, you guys did a, a nice, like, uh, half set of uh, you know material. Yeah. Uh, you guys popped out. I saw later on down the line, like, some outtakes and some covers and stuff. Um, <laughs> how much do you think that has been, like, truly helpful to you guys? Because, you know, you guys only got to do some shows in, like, Jersey, PA, and you were able to do this, and it was so professional. And then you can hit the whole world. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was good. You know, it was good to, to just to be able to. Do, I mean, we're trying to do whatever we can, like to get get uh, get shows, get live stream. We might do another live stream. We might, you oh, know, cool. do a show. I mean, there's a lot of like things popping off now. Like there's some people are doing some minimal tours, and we're hearing some things going on. You know. Are there some shows down there where you at? Where you're at, Boken? Yeah, so uh, yeah, I'm in Nashville, and um, it's pretty uh pretty much open. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, the other night, uh, Scott, I, yeah, dude, <laughs> hold on. when you walk Scott out here, don't mess with the fucking cord, dude. <laughs> Scott keeps messing with the camera. Yeah. <laughs> 
at uh, at Kid Rock's uh, honky tonk the other night, I saw a picture and it was pretty much full capacity. It looked like there was like 500 people in there, easy, maybe more. Wow, wow, 500 <laughs> all, all on top of each other and just uh, yeah, good, good normalcy. So. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> No and actually, I, I promoted my first show the other night here in Nashville. So, oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah, uh, Sunday what night. Was, what happened? It, it was pretty good. We had a, a nice little turnout, and a couple of musical artists performed. And um, yeah, it, it went off great. Everybody wow. was happy, and they want return shows. So, we'll be back. Yeah, I mean, around here, it seems like a lot of cover bands, but little by little, I think these, uh, you know, the, the original bands are kicking in. So it's, you know, we're just kind of focused on recording right now like we got we got we want to just get this done so we haven't been rehearsing really we've just been like working in the studio you know so yeah it's been a lot of that and we got a couple we got a couple more drum tracks we got to do so our drummer is not off the hook yet (laughs) (laughs) a couple more tracks we're gonna we're gonna lay down and then um you know we might warm up with a live stream and then we got a potential to play some an outdoor gig, you know, which should be called cool, like like an outdoor sort of local festival type of situation. So, oh, cool. but anyway, we'll we'll announce it as soon as it's booked. But, but it's, yeah. uh, you know, that's something I keep seeing uh, consistently uh, for people that follow you guys Instagram or Facebook. You're seeing a, a lot of pictures of you guys hard at work in the studio. <laughs> well, we've been doing that for got to be months now at this point yeah yeah it's well i mean it actually started freaking two years ago <laughs> well yeah we, we actually yeah. went in the studio we recorded four songs and we released three of them so far three of them yeah cameras over here <laughs> <laughs> scott all three of you them. about the guy on jeopardy <laughs> he, he went like he went like and it was like oh that's a white supremacist si- signal did you see that no the guy no. on jeopardy said it's his third time around Scott, come on. Wow, Scott, what are you doing? Uh, Let me just there we go. Yeah, but I'm still not here. How about it now? Okay. I'm going to give it two seconds. Here we go. Five, four, oh, stop it. three, two, oh. one. We're back. <sighs> Luckily, I have two of the exact Wait, same Why camera. are you so big? I'm so small. Oh, rel- It's because you're in the foreground. Oh, I thought I was in the- <laughs> What's the opposite of foreground? The background. What? Oh, background. That's right. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, Jeopardy, yeah, three. Yes, the three inning. Yeah. <laughs> They're like 30 bucks. They suck, but, you know, they get the job done <laughs> when you need them. Yeah, Scott, here, give that. Give yeah, it. Scott, take Scott. this. Take fucking it. guy. <laughs> Poor Scott. Poor Scott. <laughs> You're not getting on camera. To- <laughs> he was on camera for six interviews today with us. I'm like, get off. You're not on anymore. <laughs> Uh, so so the uh the fourth song that's already recorded and done are we going to hear that at any time soon or you well, yeah, the, uh, you know, we did we did we recorded four original session with our original drummer um the fourth song is still actually we're working on we're, we're working on finishing that it was just something we just we weren't like super thrilled with the song but it like developed we got some great like sound programming and everything in it it's, it's a great song which one constitution oh right so dante's singing some lead on that and uh we got Whoa. like it's gonna be cool so we got that song in the works and then we, we recorded uh like how many more do we record like six yeah six more seven more songs so we got some covers. oh after the four right yeah four. yeah probably that many yeah we yeah. got we got four more originals and we got two more in the works and we got like six cover songs we recorded Oh wow! Some of them are short punk, like you've heard some of them, uh, the Misfits and the Ramones. So some of those songs are yeah. like, trickling out. You know, like fifty nine and a half seconds. Long. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're <laughs> short. 
<laughs> we did a cover of the Beatles. We did um, we got a real special version of the only we're working on. So we were wow. Yeah, so we were going to do destroy all. We kind of had that recorded, but like the only kind of came up, and we had a, a special pianist that that really did a good version of it. And we might do a really cool, different, you know, kind of mellow version. So, oh, that's cool. As soon as that's ready, we might put that on the album. We, we're not sure. It's just kind of like in the process of taking form the whole album. But you know, we have to have at least like twelve songs. You know, so let's see what happens. When do you think that's going to be ready to roll? Hopefully, you know, within three months, if everything goes good, you know, we're just going to put it out ourselves. Okay. It's going to be out, you know, we're just going to put it out that, ourselves. Dante, let me, let me ask you this. As now you've been working with Trip, you know, from the get-go with this whole uh, face Almost. without fear. Almost. Yeah. It, w working with Trip, it, it, is Trip uh, kind of like a perfectionist at all? Uh, <clears throat> when I first joined, I certainly, uh, I felt a little bit like I was walking on eggshells when it came to anything in the creativity aspect of creating a song because of his, you know, repertoire, you know, sure. like I didn't want to be saying something and then looking like an idiot because he's already <laughs> got it planned out or whatever, you know. But as we went on, he expressed more and more as how, like, he was always open for any type of changing. And and then I felt a little more open to throw some ideas. And then we used some riffs that I made or we used, like, a vocal pattern that we used that Mantis ends up, you know, tweaking a little bit. But to, like, at this point in the game, I feel like I've certainly put in my portion of songwriting, not even just playing or, you know, being just the guitarist or singing lines and stuff. Right. But in terms of him being a perfectionist, he I'll leave the studio, let's say 11 o'clock, and he'll call me the next day, say he didn't leave till one. All they had to do is mix something. It was only going to take 20 more minutes. That's why I left. He's there for two more hours because this wasn't right. We had to redo this. And that one hit that nobody would have ever heard kept twang twanging wrong, had to fix it. Yeah, we found one. A uh, kick drum hit that wasn't in there the other night. It's like, there's something. Are you missing. kidding me? Yeah, there's a kick drum. <laughs> there's one kick drum. I was like, there's something missing. Yeah, there. that's what I'm talking about. We focus in on it. It's like, right there? Yeah, right there. Yeah, that's it. So, you know. yeah, and you know, it's great when the fucking uh, the sound engineer staring at it, like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> no, but the guy we're using, <laughs> the guy we, we have now for this this run, uh, Jerry is, is an awesome engineer. He just he moves so fast. We went to other studios and this guy just he's he's so fast and he can do anything you know it's just it's just great so the production's coming along we're gonna have the same guy who mixed our three songs chris collier he's amazing so you know it's gonna sound great it's gonna all sound consistent obviously he's gonna have the same production style. yeah i'm excited so Been but yeah years. Just, and there's gonna Let's be go. stuff like what dante's uh you know vocals and some songwriting like the, the, there's a lot we have we have actually a, an outside songwriter we use who's a programmer who we who contributed so much to our sound okay and he gave he gave us a song and we took it and we you know worked with it um mantis put some vocals on it and we all like which one was that again it never ends oh yes <laughs> that song is a jammer i love that one yeah, that song. Nobody's really heard it yet. No, that's a good one. I Except like we one. played it live. We, we played it live. If someone was at the show, they heard it. But uh, we haven't released it out yet. So that's we might actually film a video for that song. That's a good one. I like that. We're one. We're actually right now getting back to what we're re getting ready to release. We got. We didn't do a video for my parasite. So, and then the zero, the new song we just have out now. We might actually have a music video for both of those. We got two different okay. uh, directors, but we we've been so busy with working on the music uh but i want to get those two songs like just kind of like document them with an official music video we got the footage filmed already believe it or not we filmed oh wow my okay. parasite when we were filming the live stream at oh the end, right we right. just went like let's well we got all these cameras set up let's just go through my parasite twice to our recording you know the official recording and we just like lip synced it out we, we, we gave some little uh, clips of it at the uh, different social on the social media. You can see some clips of uh, my parasite people 
dog that they're watching, just like a, like a little side angle camera so they can see what we're doing. But it's going to be a professional edited video. I'm not sure if it's going to be performance or concept a little bit, but we're working on those two videos. So, but the zero cool. just came out, you know, a couple months ago. We put the zero out, and now the lyric video just came out, which I've been telling you about. And the guy took three, four months to get it done, but you know, it came out awesome. Yeah, because talking about perfectionist, I wanted to make sure all the. Oh my god! You know, <laughs> yeah, he had he sent over like three different versions. Like, oh, in case this is too much, or if this isn't yeah, enough, like, swap it with this one. Now, because I was test marketing it to certain people and certain people were like this is too offensive you should take this out or this is gonna this is too upsetting take these dead bodies out and stuff <laughs> <laughs> make sure we hide the truth bury yeah. the facts yeah I had to, I had to, you know <laughs> now were, were, were you always like that trip through throughout your career like very like in the studio and fine-tuning things yeah yeah i mean it's it's been that way with, with rough house we were in the studio i you know it's kind of, there's kind of like a, 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 um, you know, kind of a pattern like with rough house and then with dope and then with murder dolls, learning guitar solos coming in very, 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 very prepared to have an every note, almost every note worked out coming mm -hmm. in doing guitar solos like that. Um, whereas I've played with guys who just like go in there and like, just, you know, just like can just like go off the cuff and just like, you know, ad lib it out you know, spontaneously come up with leads. But, uh, but me and Dante are just kind of like, you want to plan it out. Let's plan out a solo. And there's a little wiggle room, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Minimal, oh. min minimal having to fix up. It's yeah. more like we get a good run and then tweak maybe a note or two. Yeah. Like the, the there's a solo I did on the Beatles song revolution. Yeah. And that's kind of, it was a spontaneous type of thing that I, I just had to recreate. I, I did something and I wanted to recreate it. We just kept going over and over till I got the recreation of what was sort of spontaneous. It was kind of, it was kind of cool. So I like kind of going to old school with that. So it's going to be some pretty cool things. So yeah, one thing that kind of surprised me though is, um, you know, I have seen like, I, I guess I've seen kind of like, like the list of covers you, you guys have done, you know, like you mentioned the Beatles and Ramones misfits and, um, I was kind of surprised. I don't hear or, or, like any Kiss covers in there. <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> I'd like to do some Kiss, but I mean, we actually the concept of this band. It was kind of the seeds of this concept for this band kind of started before Dope and this band called Ego that I had back in the nineties. Okay. We had a band called <clears throat> Ego, me and Preston from Dope, Preston mm -hmm. Nash from Dope. And we had this band. Dave Weekly was in it for a little while. Right. And then Evil Ed, who co-wrote a song that we're, we're still doing, which is the song Independence, came out of that band. But Ego was this industrial metal. We had everybody in the band sang lead, so there wasn't one lead singer. So it was kind of this cool, like almost Beatles, Kiss type of thing. So we had several lead singers. Um, and uh, it's kind of the seeds started there. So... That's kind of, and we do one song, which is Independence, which you're going to hear, like, come to take what's mine. Freedom is not equality. Those those hooks in the song are from that that song. So um, that's going to be pretty cool on the album. But that song came out great. That was co-written by original member, this guy, Evil Ed. Wow. Um, from back in the 90s. He was actually working with us for a little while with this project. So it's like, I, I try to bring people in from different facets and different people who, like, worked on stuff with us and uh include people in and, and songwriting and it's like i'm kind of inspired by the kiss destroyer album you know kiss destroyer i'm reading a book right now <clears> called <throat> shout it out loud i think i mentioned it to you when we talk sometimes yeah it's a great book um james campion i think is the writer and it's just this amazing book about kiss destroyer and how they just pull all these things together and it's inspiring me to you know in this album like all right you don't have to worry it doesn't have to be every band member writing Songs we can have an outside writer like this guy Spider who wrote It Never Ends. And uh even Beth is kind of inspiring us to do this version of the only. Because Beth was like this song and then made it into a piano ballad. So we're uh, you know, gonna put some different influences in here. But it's still, you know, you know, what you heard from the first three songs, that's our core sound, but 
like Dante said, like it never ends is a different kind of song. It's almost in the realm, in the vein of like cold by static X. Okay. It's plotting, you know, but it has, we other influence and it sounds a little Alice in Chains. It sounds a little, you know, has some cool vocals. Uh, Mantis just did some great, amazing vocals in there. So you know, <clears throat> there's going to be some surprises. There's a couple songs that are actually from the uh, static X star to war leftover songs that were songs that I, I had that didn't have any vocals and Wayne kind of dug them and we developed them, you know, with Dante and Mantis's help, we developed okay. these songs, a song called deep scars, a song called Magnolia blooms. Great songs. Those two songs, deep scars yeah. was like, I love scars. That's a great. Song. That was inspired by Slayer to me. So it's, it's a slow song, but it's like one of those slow Slayer songs from like seasons in the abyss, like kind of like, you know, um, the slow plotting groove oriented songs and Magnolia Blooms is kind of just like an industrial metal song, but the vocals that we put together just make it. So it sounds a little bit like Static X, but the vocals take it in another realm, you know, so we're uh, forging, yeah, I don't, forging new I don't exactly sing like Wayne no. Static, so. But the, but the music, the, 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 no, music no. The, the music and the, the, the program, but the, the, the vocals that uh, Mantis and Dante put on there, and you know, it's like it's saying. different three part harmonies and stuff. Sprinkle on a little extra, cool. pretty cool. So, we're, I mean, we're excited to get this album. It's like it is what it is. Oh it's my gonna god, be yeah, cool. <laughs> gonna be cool. We want to, we don't have a name for it yet. You know, shooting fish in a barrel, some, you know, some cool, you know, you <laughs> no, know? <laughs> stop it because stop it. Because now I'm gonna write a list. I like to have, exactly. like, I like to have, like some really cool cliche. Like you know, ever notice like bands like that do cliches? You know, like back in the '60s, a lot of like bands had cliche album titles. I can't even think of one now. But I go to auctions and antique stores, see all these old albums from the '60s, and they got like all these motifs, and they're doing something on the album cover, like little goofy shooting fish in a barrel wall there with guns, like at this barrel. <laughs> 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 It doesn't mean anything, you know. It just yeah, yeah. We'll do. Don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Right. And we'll have somebody like opening a you know, horse. The back <laughs> it's, not, it's not rocket science. We're all there in the lab. We're, yeah, we're in the lab with test tubes and shit. That's funny. Yeah, we have somebody. Yeah, somebody's on the table. We're all in there. Stop it. <laughs> that's fantastic. Uh, I love it. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> You can't have your cake and eat it too. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so so let, let, how about um let, let's do a roll call of members because as I see in the picture, I think from the last time we talked, we have a couple new members. Yeah, it's like uh you know, like Marilyn Manson or Dope. You know, you gotta have rotating members because it makes things more interesting, keeps everyone guessing. Like, who's the bass player now? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just uh we, we have uh as you see the bass player right there. Okay. Randy, he's uh, <laughs> gone. <laughs> he's gone right now. But yeah, Randy actually helped out with some some of the bass lines. He was an amazing bass player. He helped with some lyrics that might end up on the album. He was he contributed some cool stuff. He just wasn't, you know, he just wasn't into the style as much. He wasn't quite into metal. He wasn't he's into more like commercial stuff. So he wasn't quite into it, but he did a great job and he's a great dude. I, I like him personally. He's awesome, you know. So cool. we're still friends with him and everything, but he just, uh, it, it, he just wasn't into it as much now, you know. He's so, the yeah. only dude who would at least laugh at my jokes. <laughs> <laughs> if I said a terrible ass joke and no, not even Mantis laughed, Randy laughed. <laughs> <laughs> Randy thought everything I said was hilarious. <laughs> So, yeah, we got a, a new bass player coming in, and it's actually a guy who, who we've been working with for, like, two, three years who does okay. programming for us. He did the program for the song Deliverance. Wait, who? What do you mean, who? Reg. It, it, oh, 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 right, right. right. <laughs> is it, is oh, it Scott? Guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scott, no, Scott, Scott sucks. sucks. No, Scott's not <laughs> no more. No, Reg, is a, in, he's an independent industrial artist in New York City. He's okay. been working with us with some programming. He's working with me on some some other songs and stuff. But but uh, he's an amazing bass player too. I couldn't believe. It. I was like, you play, you know, we might need a bass player. And he's like, showing me all, all the stuff he can do. And he's great. So 
Wow. Be awesome. And then we got our new drummer, Andre. You know. Go there. Boom. Right over there. Yeah, there you <laughs> go. <laughs> yeah, Andre's uh, Andre played our show with us back in November. Um, but yeah, we're sorry to see Tom leave. Tom was awesome, you know. Tom's in our video and stuff. Tom's TJ, sorry, TJ, TJ. Tom, what's the J stand for? I don't think it did. Junior. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> shout out to Tom. Tom's got a new band too. It's like I can't. You oh, know, does he? No, he's I got a new that. band too. Yeah, it's not methodical. No, I can't think of the name of it. He just launched a new band. I can't think of the name of it. Well, that sucks. Super yeah, I shout, out, shout out to it. Shout though, out. What I, yeah, I, I think know. he's following us. <clears throat> Dang. Well, so it's yeah. no hard feelings. But yeah, Tom Tom was awesome. He did our live stream. He was actually not officially in the band when he did the live stream. So he did the live stream. He was, he was like uh, Andre was actually in the band at the time, but we didn't because of COVID. There's like behind the scenes because of COVID, we couldn't rehearse. All the rehearsal studios were. Shot. Yeah, we didn't have uh, much of an right. option. We kind of we had to stick with yeah. who was able to play. The yeah, drums. so Tom you know, let me and he was he, he was cool he, enough to yeah he play was cool it enough to play us. and you know it was great and uh, you know that's just that was the era of COVID. You know, <laughs> it's just right, like right. It sucked. There's but a great. Um, there's a great song I've been listening to over and over again, oh, which I didn't like at first. But I listened to it. It's called Coronavirus. It's a song by Tom McDonald. And he just listened to it and it was it captures what we were feeling back in March of last year. It just captures that freaking that vibe. And, and it's just like where everyone was scared. They didn't know what was going on. The 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 you remember what going to I remember going to like six supermarkets in one night to look for stuff because everything was starting to get scarce and you're like determined. It's like it was almost like Almost like, what's that game where you go searching for things like a scavenger hunt? <clears throat> you yeah, know, it was like a scavenger hunt. I'm going to find eggs and toilet paper, and I'm going to find, you know, when things were starting yeah, to I run. guess for you, dude, I literally never had a problem finding things. Hmm. I, dude, had I remember. Towels, I had toilet paper. I had hand sanitizer. No, there was a, did I even wow. use those things? <clears throat> the toilet paper I did, but, you know. No, there was a point in time where you couldn't get certain things. Yeah. Started, everything becomes scarce. It was like a game. I remember I came home one time, like the only thing that they had at the supermarket was literally like cans of sardines and beans. <laughs> wow. Like <laughs> you couldn't get nothing. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty I, crazy. I don't even like sardines. No, and it's like, <laughs> yeah, that, you, you eat what you can get, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> but now, like, I'm all paranoid. I'm all so stocked up right now with things. I'm like, I mean, I got, I got, I got so much. I actually literally have so many. Uh, the disinfecting wipes containers that I'm looking on the back to see when they expire to make sure they don't dry out. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm like, these actually have an expiration date. I'm like, cool. But yeah, I'm like getting like, I'm, I'm so stocked up on things. Things are expiring. I got to put them in the fridge. <laughs> it's crazy. I have been living my best and be most comfortable day. life for probably the past seven months. I have been living like normal because I just don't care. <laughs> <laughs> very, very, very done with it. Live like Dante. Oh Don't yeah, care. man, it's great. I got no no cares. Don't worry about nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I just go to work and I come home and that's it. <laughs> now you mentioned. Uh, I was gonna embarrass you. Mention something, but I won't. I I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I want them to have footage of me hitting yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you you mentioned the live show back in November, like. How did that come about? Like in the middle of everything, like you guys ended up doing a show out of nowhere. Yeah, we were determined to play a show. You know, we were just like, all right, we've been with all this COVID stuff. We were just determined to play a show, and it was just like, um, we found a place uh, that actually lets play indoors, which is kind of strange at the time because most right. shows were outside. And uh, dude was like uh, giving us the opportunity, Eric over Riverside and it was just like they do big big outdoor shows so we might be playing there again but but yeah this this show was just like thrown together and we were just like we could play he offered us actually two other shows and they were too quick and the scheduling didn't work so the guy was doing shows like there was this window of time in the fall where bands started playing again it's just there's so many errors of covid there's so many different things waves that just happened and as soon as we played in November 
some other wave started and everyone started shutting things down again. Like Pennsylvania and everything where we played started closing things down again. So it was just right. weird. Every state had some different – and in it, I mean, I don't think it's over yet. I hope it's over, but – You know, it's, it's weird. Like a lot of places down here, like I, I noticed, like if you go into a supermarket or go into a, a store, it's like it's almost like the restaurant mentality to a point where people are walking in with their mask, but then you see like people are just slowly just dropping the mask as you're walking around oh, yeah. the store. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I, I hold a <laughs> handkerchief in my hand, and if they approach me, and then when they don't, because no right yeah my landlord is like you know, i won't mention his name but my, my landlord is like he just walks everywhere without a mask he's just like that's I awesome. wearing it i ain't I, wearing a mask and he, he went to the police and asked about what their policy is so if he goes into a store and they want to threaten to call the police on him, he goes i already talked to the police yeah i mean you know but they're not I, laws so the police really can't do anything well, all they can I'm do is like, remove you from the premises if i don't the want no trouble i just go in like a bandit you know i'm just like I'm just like, how funny. I'm here to do my banking. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right. Um, I like <laughs> get, to do my get banking. all my money, please. Um, could you please give me, like, I thought I did. I was walking up to my bank, going like this to walk into the bank. It's just like, like, when is that going to stop? You know? How crazy is that? Like, everybody walks into a bank wearing a mask now. Yep. <laughs> no, I mean, the, the, I guess the two biggest pet peeves I have is people who walk around with their mask over their mouth and their nose is sticking out. Yeah, it's it's the just, only way I wear it, just, it if I have to. It's just absolutely ridiculous. <clears throat> and then worse than that is people walking down the street wearing a mask by themselves, like Dude, in I broad get, open air. I walking. yell at people as I'm driving, as I see them alone in their car with a mask on. I'm Wait, like, oh, that's what I'm gonna say. It's just, yeah, it's just, it's just so ludicrous. I mean, I understand you got you want to wear a mask. You're up close with somebody, or you're. Maybe you're shopping and someone could come up behind you so you wear a mask because you never know. But it's like at this point, you just let me know when it's over. <laughs> let me know when it's over. I'll just pull my mask and my head down. <laughs> like, but yeah, it's crazy, dude. So, <laughs> but your state is pretty much uh, doing great, man. It, it, it really me. is. Like, uh, I hear like of... Texas, Florida, and Tennessee. I'm like, Tennessee. Yeah. Wow. May, May 14th. Um, the restrictions are lifted for, you know, like restaurants and venues and stuff like that. It can go back to full capacity and um, full hours again to 2, 3 a.m. And but, but the part that just doesn't make sense. You still have to wear your mask when you enter. Yeah. But as soon as you're inside, the virus you gives can... up and then it leaves. I know. Oh, I yes. know. I, yes. I'm a scientist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be on the album cover to prove it. <laughs> what can you do? <laughs> so, so I, I, I mean, uh, I got, I got to ask this too. You know, um, with the Static X stuff that has come out last year with a bunch of your songs, how's that uh, been for you to like hear your songs? You know, after all these years, like come to life now, and, and you're hearing, you know, your your songs, but in different representations. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's you know, bittersweet. There's like a pro and con to it. It's like I'd rather hear it than not hear it. So I'm glad it's out than not be out. Sure, it's not the form that I think it, it, they should have taken, which I've already you know people know I'm not happy with it. But but it's out there and it's you know it's a representation and I hear which a lot of people don't know. I'm hearing my lyrics, which is pretty cool. And two of the songs. Wayne is singing my lyrics. So that, you know, is, is cool. So it, it's nice, but, uh, you know, you know, I'd rather hear. And I, I, I heard that Warner brothers is supposed to release the original versions. I don't know if that's still on plan. I, I have to look into that, but Warner might oh, wow. be releasing the original 2005 versions of those three songs hollow. Okay. Um, something of my own and bring you down. Wow those three songs. So they might release it. I don't know. It's, there's a, there's a, there was an understanding that a year after the album was released, they were going to release those songs. Warner themselves were going to release those three songs. So we'll see what happens. We'll see this summer if they get released. So if I find out about it, I'll, I'll you know, I'll promote it. You know, we'll find out. 
we were actually going to cover some of those songs. We were going to do the original versions of that, Face Without Fear. But well, I hollowed, have, right? Yeah, we yeah we started to jam on hollow. But now I might I might do another. I might release them in another form. I, I, I'm, I'm kind of working on that. But uh, but yeah, for now it's like you know we're just happy. Put, we got to get this album out. So you know yeah. we're happy. Like like Static X did their thing. They put this out and uh, you know it's cool. There's all, actually one other song that that's they released, which I think I think they released it officially. It's My Destruction, which is a song. I, I wrote too. So that's pretty cool. That's out there. Cool. Now, now something I want to ask you about, and I, and I don't want to, you know, it, it's a year old already. There was a bunch of mudslinging that did go on between, uh, you know, you and Etzel. And I don't yeah. even want to get into that. Um, but the only question I honestly have, you might call me crazy, but the question I have out of, I think it was, it was I forget who, it was either your statement or Etzel's statement, but uh, that you were at Dimebag's funeral. So yeah. it made me think, like, what was uh, what was your relationship with Dimebag, and like, what was your reaction, like, when that whole crazy thing happened with, uh, you know, Dimebag and the whole shooting and everything. Well, <clears throat> well, yeah, that that was a shock because the 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 little interesting piece of history right there. The last show I did with Static X was October of two thousand four. We played a big outdoor show, radio show down in Florida. I think it was Orlando. And Static X headlined it. Okay. Damage Plan and um, Drowning Pool played the show too. But okay. we were built, I don't know if we were built over them. We played last. So we, we, we finished the night off. So it felt like they were opening for us. And Dimebag sat right on a road case right next to me while I was playing, like right off the side of the stage. Dimebag was right there. And there's video of it, which we're going to release eventually of Dimebag. He's just like, they're jamming while we're playing. It's just like, and then two months later, he's gone, you know? Wow. So it was like, and I know that night, memorable night, there's pictures of it. Wayne was partying with Dimebag. You know, Wayne rarely partied when, when I was in the band. He was, you know, once in a while, he'd let his hair down. <laughs> and he, <laughs> and uh, that night he partied with Dimebag and uh, I think Dimebag's wife and I forget who else was with Wayne at the time. But yeah, it was like yeah, there, there's this there's these two uh, like rock fans that that came around. Uh, I think her name was Laura and ah, I can't think of the guy's name. Damn it. <laughs> um, Drew, uh, not Drew, but uh, th these two—they were like always rocked out. They had red hair. These these two like uh, like super fans that, that came around and and they they were partying and they they got pictures of everything, and it was crazy. There's a pictures of Dimebag with Wayne you can see online somewhere that night. Okay. Uh, after they're partying and stuff, and uh, it's just a lot of memories. So that 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 show. So after that, so Dimebag's passes away, and everyone's shocked. But our tour manager, um, Royal Jensen, he was tight. He used to work for uh, Pantera. So, and we okay. toured with Pantera too. So they invited us with him to the funeral services and everything else. So we flew out there as a band, flew out to, you know, Texas, to Dallas. And uh, yeah, it was really sad, you know. Wow. But we, yeah, we went to the viewing, which was Dimebag with Eddie Van Halen's guitar laying, with, right. which is crazy and amazing it's just to be there. But Dope was there. Dope was there okay. viewing the night, the, the night before the funeral. So Dope happened to be coming through tour because Racy Shea, the drummer, mm -hmm. had a relationship with Pantera. That's why they were there. You know, nothing against Dope, but, you know, Dope didn't really have a relationship with Pantera. Racy Shea, because he was in Jenna Torturer's, I guess he knew them and he, he was invited. So he brought them as a guest, saw them there, me and Edsel hugged and Edsel was like, listen, life is too short, man. You know, seeing dime bag pass away. And it's like, you know, we got to bury our problems, bury the hatchet, so to speak. And, you know, just, uh, so he was, uh, dude, we were all chummy, chummy, taking pictures and hanging out and all the guys and, you know, the, all the bands were hanging out because it was a somber moment. It made you reevaluate. Sure reevaluate life and uh 
you know, so that was a pretty moving moment. And then the next day, watching Eddie Van Halen and Ch Charlie Benante and Zach Wilde give eulogies, three eulogies, it was just yeah. amazing. And now, you know, fast forward to now, and now we don't even have Eddie Van Halen anymore. Yeah, or Vinnie Paul. Vinnie Paul. Vinny, yeah. Yeah, no, Vinny, after the funeral, like we always would go to Vinny's house. Vinny's house was like the low, the, 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 the uh, end of the night party was at Vinny's house. It was the destination. Um, after he played a gig in Dallas, Vinny invited the bands over or to his strip club clubhouse. I forget the name of it. Clubhouse. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then uh, over to his house, he had a Christmas tree dedicated to his mom and, and everyone was partying and hanging out and jamming. He, he had a drum set set up and people. So we, we go to Vinny's house a lot of times when we're in Dallas, but after the funeral, we ended up at Vinny's house again. So it was like, you know, a last moment there, you know, but it was very, very moving, you know, so never forget it. Wow. Yeah. It's still such a crazy mind blowing moment for any musician in the whole music business. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was something else and losing, yeah, losing Wayne. And then another thing, that, the other person that hit me is, is, uh, you know, Chester, Chester Bennington. Yeah, you know, you know, that was something I've always wanted to ask you, even like in our personal conversations. Weren't you involved? I could have swore I saw you involved with the whole executioners thing or something. No, that was just Wayne. Uh, but we did we did the executioners song at a ESPN awards night event. Okay, that's what it was. And I wish I could remember. I, I someone has it posted up on Facebook, not on YouTube, it's up on Facebook if you if you search for it. Okay. ESPN Awards sports uh, sports awards or something ESPN Awards show, and it's us playing and I can't think of this rapper's name, and and uh, but it's the band the whole band Static X we're playing with this rapper and there's a DJ or something but it's we did that song, and uh, okay. it was it was awesome in front of this big crowd at the uh, oh, I can't remember the name of the theater it's uh, I think it was, I think it was uh, the Universal okay. the theater that is uh, out in L A. So yeah, that was something. Is that what you're talking about? Because that I, I was involved with it at that point. I think that was it. Yeah, cause I, I I do remember like at that time seeing a performance and remember that you were on stage playing. And I yeah I just, yeah that that was it. Yeah, I, and I had done searches for it on YouTube and never could find. It. I'm like, what the yeah, hell? I'm was that I saw? Somebody, I might have been. I don't. I don't think anyone from Lincoln Park was at that. But but the performance is up up on uh, Facebook somewhere. So that was a lot of fun. I remember, I remember we were there. Me and Wayne are on one side, and Tony and Ken were on the other side. And I went because I was trying to be cool. And I went to spin my guitar, and the DJ's table was there. I went, bam! I was like, oops! <laughs> <laughs> and I moved over and did it the right way. But yes, yeah, <laughs> funny stuff. But, what, yeah. So were were you friends with Chester at all? Did, did you have any relationship with Chester? Or no, dude. But but. All the guys in Lincoln Park. I mean, we were friendly with them. I mean, that we were like, right. you know, the, and um, uh, they, they, one of the guys in Lincoln Park directed our video, um, for Cold. Okay. Um, back in uh, 2002, uh, the DJ. I can't think of his name. Um, but yeah, he he directed our video. But we were such, we did so many uh, shows with Lincoln Park on that uh, Family Values tour, and then we went to. We went to Mexico. We did some shows with them. So we hung out with them all. They were on the same management company, the firm. So okay. we knew them pretty well. So anytime we'd run into them at the airport or anywhere in the office, all those guys, there's no ego there. All five of those guys are like super cool. Every single one of them. You know, and sometimes when you got a band, there's like one guy with an ego or two guys or something. But those those guys were freaking awesome. You know, just awesome. But but I've, I've had conversations with Chester like many times out on tour at different places or backstage or, and he's always been super, super nice, you know, so it's just heartbreaking, you know, to think about him not being here. It, it's really, um, you know, when you like with these, like the, the Chester Bennington's and um, your Kurt Cobain's and Chris Cornell's like guys like that, that have left such a an impact on so many people's lives musically to go and do something like that. Even for, you know, people in the music business, I think a lot of people probably don't even realize that it hurts and hits people in the music business 
just as much as the normal everyday fan. Yeah, it's yeah, it's crazy, especially in the music business. Like, like what what if you could name what a couple people that you idolized or you were influenced by that you law, who would you say? Like you yourself personally. Anybody? What? Any musician that you idolize or were in, influenced by that died or something that you that you think is a big loss like, for you? Oh, well, I guess. I mean, the only really one that I really like hit me, I guess, was Eddie Van Halen. I can't even think of anybody else. Yeah, because I mean, growing up, losing Randy Rhodes was a big one. That was the that first. Was I think I, I felt like I felt it. You know, Randy Rhodes. She died in a plane crash. Yeah, you know that was crazy. But but before when I got into like listening to these uh, metal bands in high school, Bon Scott was already dead. When I and I, and I felt right. the loss, even though he was already dead, I felt that because he was so awesome. He was so awesome. And then the other loss I think that shocked everybody was uh, um, in in Metallica. You know. Oh, Cliff Burton. Mm. Yeah, when when Cliff got killed, man, that was just you know, especially how he died, just like that. I mean, anybody that's on tour, you know, knows oh the bus, and you know, you hope the bus is going. We did a we did a uh, a, a run across country to start the. It was early two thousand January two thousand, and I thought about you know Cliff Burton. We're driving cross country in snow blizzards from wow. New Jersey or New York. To Seattle, <laughs> so we had to go straight across the country, and we <laughs> were driving through snow. I mean, we're driving through like two feet of snow, and we're I'm just like in the back watching movies, like we're gonna be fine, you know, we're gonna be fine. <laughs> you know, I remember watching uh, a few Good Men or something. <laughs> I was like, and then uh, we get there, and we're just that close to being able to make it for the sound check. And we, we missed the sound check so they wouldn't let us play. So we drove all the way out there. We missed the first show of the tour. Holy crap. Yeah, it was Power Man 5000, Static X, Dope, um, Chevelle, I think. <laughs> Holy crap. Yeah, and we got all the way out there and we couldn't play. We're like, we're there, so just watching the show. I guess we'll just watch the show. They wouldn't let us play. <laughs> I think we started the next day in Portland or something. But yeah, oh, but yeah, man. I thought about Cliff Burton there, just driving through that snow. I'm like, oh, I hope the bus doesn't. Is this guy cool? <laughs> <laughs> His hands were shaking on the wheel. Oh, geez. We're fine. <laughs> just go in the back, watch movies, and you know. Don't even pay attention to anything. This is a straight run. He drove straight across. No stopping, no hotels. We had to go straight across. This driver just didn't know what he was taking. <laughs> Holy crap. Yeah, it was crazy. Wow. But, uh, so so I, I got one, I, you know, we can't do an interview with you guys and not have some type of uh, geek question in there with – you know, the world of comic books and, and everything else. Since it is May the 4th that we're taping this, <clears throat> you know, may, may the force be with you forth. Um, I'm not even going to ask a Star Wars question. I'm going to go a different route. I want to know, were you a bigger fan of Star Trek or Battlestar Galactica? Star Trek. Star Trek. Yeah, Star Trek. I watched the hell out of Star Trek. Which huh. Star Trek? I watched more of the um the next generation with patrick stewart yeah i've seen the ones with william shatner but they had they had like a back-to-back -back thing when i got home from school when i was a kid so i'd get home throw on sci-fi and i'd watch two episodes of the you know like the next generation yep. straight <laughs> so i i watched a lot of that <laughs> nice. yeah for me next generation and the original series are equal yeah wow okay. equal i i can't i can't I can't say one was better. They're, they're both amazing in their own right. Deep Space Nine, well, I, eh, down here, and then Voyager was, eh, you know. But Deep Space Nine was still pretty pretty good. I, I watch every season. And Voyager, I watch every season too. But then I kind of dropped off after that. But the movies are all 10 movies from back then were great. Nobody gives love to Battlestar Galactica. You know what? I just never watched it. <laughs> 
Like I was already watching Star Trek. I was involved with these characters, and I'm like Battlestar Galactica. What the hell is that? Like I just never watched. <laughs> well, oh, so, well, at the time, like, like it was like it had the special effects of Star Wars because it had industrial light and magic doing the the ships and the, the right. scenes. Right. But but the cheesy like robot guys, <laughs> and you know it's the just like, and 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 Is they got. Remember? Character act, TV character actors that were like, oh, that guy that was in on Barney Miller, or that you know, I was like, they had different actors um, that I was like, eh. But uh, but yeah, I just did like the whole plot of like they're returning back to Earth and the voyage, and so there, there's this. It was almost like Lost in Space, sort of, wasn't it? Yeah, they were, kind trying, of. They were, they were trying to get back, and I don't know. Lauren Green was just like. Were they ever in danger? It's like, like, like <laughs> if they lost the ship, everyone's gone, right? You know, it's like, you, you know, I, I loved the hell out of Battlestar Galactica, but also at the time, like, I, I was so conflicted with Lauren Green because he was always in the Alpo commercials too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but did you? I, I like. I know my brother. My brother was really into Battlestar Galactica because of the two main guys. What, what were names? Uh. Starbuck, Starbuck, and what was the Apollo? Apollo, yeah, yeah, they were good. The, the girls were hot, chicks were hot. Yeah, yeah. that's funny. That's the only reason I watch TV. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> how, about, how about Buck Rogers was so cheesy? I was just going to say Battlestar Galactica or Buck Rogers. Uh, yeah, B B Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> <laughs> not, not even for Aaron Gray. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> 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 what, what, was her, what was her name? Wil, Wilma Deerding or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> Too funny. Cool. All right, yeah, guys. Who was, it, who was it you interviewed recently? Uh, you interviewed somebody. Oh, you interviewed uh, the girl from Arrow. From Arrow? No. Did I? The girl from Arrow. No. Yeah. British accent, but it's not real. Girl from Arrow. No, I, I actress, wanted to. Actress. I wanted to interview her, but I didn't. Oh, I thought you did. No. Oh. I actually, I just interviewed Michelle Pfeiffer's sister a few weeks ago. She's on really? an ABC show. Yeah, Big Sky. Oh, okay. Dee Dee Pfeiffer. Mm. Yeah, and Maybe actually, guess who else she interviewed? Go ahead. She actually, I, I didn't bring it up to her, but I'll bring it up to you guys. She did a bunch of like Playboy issues too. <laughs> Looks better than Michelle, in my opinion. <laughs> she interviewed the girl from Cherry Pie. Oh, no way. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Too funny. <laughs> cool. So, all right, guys. So let's uh let's recap. So hopefully in about three months, we're gonna have the full length face without fear album. Mm -hmm. That's the plan. Will we hear another single before the release, or will we wait till the release? No, we're, we're probably going to release one more. We'll release okay. another single before the release, yep. Cool, cool. And uh, any more videos to pop off before the release? Or Well, yeah, that, that's we're working on My Parasite and the Zero like full-length video, and we're going to possibly do whatever next single we're going to release, too. Okay, cool. So. And... Could there be a pop up show at any point? Yeah, I mean, if, if we get, uh, there's a couple of things in the works. If we get a, a certain offer or two, we might do a show. You know, just if, as long as we don't have to headline, if we can open up and do a 45 minute set or something where we can get in there and just pound it out. That's what we want to do. Nice. Cool. And where should we send everybody? I know you guys got a bunch of merch going on. Yeah, well, yeah, facewithoutfear.com is our main website but uh you know we're on social media facebook instagram and then of course youtube which has all our videos you can check it out on youtube and if you go into youtube too there's like a playlist of like some interesting kind of rare videos that people may not know about like little interesting things like static x or dope related and stuff it's pretty some pretty cool stuff deep deep in but our main videos are all there you know cool. three lyric videos one music video and the live stream. Nice. And what people need to do that I've really come to learn over the last so many months of doing uh, research on the whole 
algorithm stuff and stuff like that. When you're watching stuff on YouTube, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and even more, if you can leave a comment, it helps even more. I didn't ever understood algorithm. They don't. They, do they have even a beat to them? <laughs> does, Al, does Al Gore have rhythm? I don't know. Al Gore rhythm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. You you might be designing new shirts for Trip. <laughs> <laughs> oh, guys, thanks for doing this. Thanks for hanging out. It was great catching yeah. up. Let's not wait another eleven months to do this. Oh, that'd be great. Again, and and want to say a shout out to everybody who supports us. We really appreciate it. And oh yeah, come check it out. You know, I can't wait to actually play for you. <laughs> so many people asking when we're coming. When are you guys coming by? Soon. <laughs> Soon. 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 Later. I'll tell you that. Yeah, one. we we know we have our devices on possibly doing some like short of torn doing some live shows maybe in the Midwest. If we can get a couple shows booked. You know, we might travel somewhere out. We want to go to California. It'd be great to go out there and do a couple of shows, but maybe somewhere we can drive, go to the Midwest or go in New England or something. So hopefully if something, you know, we get a couple offers, we'll do something yeah. real soon. Real soon. I think the best way to end this interview would be, uh, you know, fuck Scott. Yeah, Scott, what the hell? Fucking Scott, man. I don't even have nothing to throw at him. Hold up. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, yes. on that note guys thanks a lot and have a great night man absolutely right on babe. thank you thank very you much, much.